Oh, it's an exciting time. Mr. Thomas John Lang has joined us. It's Friday at 3. Now, first of all, where's your ski mask? I... Uh, Nobody gave me one. Thank you, Thank Rico. You. Appreciate that, come on, one segment. We got to see. One I made segment. a bet. I don't think you can get that on your head. I tried it on in the uh, back there in the bullpen. TJ, your, your head is so ginormous. No, I know. It's, I'll try it. I got, oh. I got faith in you. Look at that. Okay. Now, but look how his ears are poking out of it. Oh, what man. if we do it with the sunglasses on? Well, that was my question to you. Oh, like yeah. Coach Prime. When you're doing this. <laughs> Punk can't even take his hat off. When you're doing the sidelines, is there any shot you I go can't. ski mask? No, no, no. I can't, I can't do that. It's hot. I can't do it. But it did fit. Sidelines during the game, firing up the crowd. <laughs> can you do that? <laughs> Oh my what are goodness. the rules? Um, there are no rules. They're lucky to no, have. It. It's radio. There's no rules on radio. So right? can you take that and 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 go live with the ski mask? Hmm. I just want to get a sense. How many yeah, of these the, do you think are going to be? There? It would be kind of it would be kind of pointless though because nobody could see me, right? No, because you're a celebrity. We would get visual proof. <laughs> so of I'm the mascot <laughs> down on the sideline pumping up the crowd now. Uh, I, that's a good question. How many? I think Rico's estimation is a little bit high. Twelve thousand is uh, that seems like a lot. I mean, that, TJ, that seems like a lot. Now here's the thing: they may not all be blue, but you're gonna have people in black and white. You probably have some uh, camouflage. You're gonna well, have the hunters. One he has when he goes turkey hunting, so I know that'll be on. His you're mind. going to have Literally a lot never of people been hunting a day in my life. <laughs> Mask are sold out, man. <laughs> People, people want to wear the mask. They want to support the team. Okay, sold out though. But what? What do stores carry? Like fifteen of those things? Tops, TJ, that's what I said. Are, no, no. But I'm saying they basically bankrupted Amazon and just said we want them all. You're going to see a lot more than you think you are. I'd Everybody say, who says they're going to the game have all said if it's a sm- the sample size, they're wearing masks down there. I'd say maybe a thousand. That's I think how that it was. was for that him, was man. kind of my estimate. I don't know. We could. We could both be way wrong. Maybe everybody in there's got one. So let me let me ask you the next question, then we'll get to actual football. But I, we are talking to people about this. Obviously, you know, I think this team's turned a corner. I believe they're going to win this division. They're going to win a playoff game. Oh, by the way, Minnesota Bluffs. So my point is, it's time to get rid of that stupid fight song. Agree? Fair. Yeah, I would say fair. Um, right there. You see, that's that's a winner, Rico. How many or Pro find, Bowls have you been to? Find, Zero. Find, That's a winner. I mean, find something different to. that gets everybody <laughs> I've been pumped to two. up, you know? I mean, and, uh, and you have to pick and choose the times when you play it, right? I mean, there were times last year where they were losing by four touchdowns and that song comes out. It's and like, then, this see, is that, just so no, no. sad. I mean, and I, I TJ, don't know if the players like it. TJ, that's my compromise. That song can only be played when you are winning. You're maybe a score away to kind of pump the crowd up. Or you've won the game. But if you're down by three touchdowns, can't play. It's as, as ridiculous as when Roy Williams do the first down. It's like, Roy, you're down by yeah, 40. Yeah, down 30. Uh, <laughs> can we just, like, th- throw some old school Mike Jones on, you know? Sure. Anything but that stupid song. Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. You know, they're yeah, all sure, on. Sure, right? sure. Yeah, get a little bit of that going. Look, all it represents is losing. I- I've even said, when they do their rebrand, use the special helmets they're coming out with. Just rebrand and make that the new full-time logo. Why? Because Bubbles the Lion, in both formats, only represents losing. Get it gone. Oh, no, I, I would do new colors. If you're going to do that, I'd take the WCF off the jerseys. Well, that's a natural. I mean, there's a lot. If you're going to do this, but... <laughs> it's a natural. Because they're not, natural. because they're going to say it's based in history. You played the song. At this point, it's just what you hear oh. when you're at the Lions game. I looked over and TJ had his uh, like a little baby bottle over there, and then I realized oh. it's his little, it's his dip bottle. It's my apple juice. Oh, so, I thought you were looking at the villain no, sign. So I, that's didn't see, why, I didn't even oh, see that's that. That's why he can't wear the ski mask. He'll have nowhere for his did the dip. Also, a good point. Fair. Yeah. Fair. You want to keep it for I, tomorrow? <laughs> I've already got something planned. I okay. told you. What are you going to do tomorrow? Certain, 
Tell I, the, you'll, you have to tune into Fox 2 at uh, 10 oh, to 11. Tomorrow. Well, we know that I'm not doing that. So <laughs> I, why don't we just get this done? I, I'll I, tell you off uh, here. Uh, Sunday. Tomorrow, <laughs> Sunday. 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 Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Sunday. <laughs> tune in well, tomorrow. It'll I be can, an infomercial. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing the pregame Forgive show. me, David. I'll I just be doing don't want people turning to Fox tomorrow and watching <laughs> Big Noon uh, kickoff and waiting for you. That's no, you you got to tell. I'll be doing the pregame show with Costa, so I won't Off air, tell us. So game-wise, Taylor Decker, gone. How big of an impact? I mean, it's not small. Yeah, but right? Seattle doesn't it's, have anybody good up front. Well, they don't have a difference maker, which is uh, kind of unique for a Seattle team. They always seem to have at least one or two guys up front that can, you know, ruin a game. Um, but no, I, I don't think it's a small impact. I mean, I don't think it's major either. I think that Panay Sewell being at left tackle, we saw it a couple years ago as rookie year. Yeah. Taylor missed the first couple weeks and uh, looked pretty damn good out there. I mean, it. Uh, Taylor Decker is a really good left tackle. I think Panay Sewell is a really good left tackle. Um, so I don't think you're getting much of a drop off there. Uh, the concern just comes at the right tackle spot. What are you going to do? There's a couple different options, right? I think the first thing is, hey, we put Matt Nelson there. He's got a lot of snaps there. He started some games last year and in the year before. Um, Vitae is also a guy that's played right tackle, you know, back in the Philly days. No, thank you. Well, here's the argument: Do you try to, you know, get your best five? On the field, if you're trying to do that, then you'd bring Glasgow off the bench, put him at right guard, bump Vitae out to right tackle. Yeah, but I just, to me, Vitae tackle is a disaster. I don't want no part of that. Just put Nelson um, there. It just haven't seen it in a while. But they, um, I, I lean towards you where it's, you mean Matt Nelson at right tackle? He's got a lot of experience there. He's much better at right tackle than he is at left tackle. We right. saw that during the preseason. Um, I don't think they're going to miss a beat. I mean, this isn't anything new to this offensive line. Last year they had what, 17 different combinations it felt like throughout the season. And Sounds they were right. still able to have success. They were still able to run the game plan, not change anything up. I mean, you're not going to – sure, I'm sure Ben Johnson's going to have in the back of his mind, okay, first, third, and long, you know, maybe give the right check, that right tackle a chip or a thump, you know, kind of slow the guys down, let them get to a rhythm. But it's not going to throw the whole offense uh, off balance where you're going to say, all right, we got to do max protection order. We can only run the ball to the left. That's, that's, that's not going to happen. So – uh, losing Decker, anytime you lose a uh, starting offensive lineman hurts a little bit, but I think they've got the depth and um, you know the competitiveness in that room to uh, to be able to go out there and get the job done. All right, so Seattle looked like a garbage can last week. Awful. Now they got to go on the road, and I got to come here. The whole bit about them being desperate. Am I wrong just thinking you're going to ragdoll this team? They signed people off the street. They were one step from signing Jansen. It's, they have no, neither of their starting tackles will play Sunday. Yeah, and it seems like Geno Smith is more like what we saw the first eight years of his career. Than, I can't help than but last be year. And Rico's all over me because I'm so arrogant about it. I just feel like they're going to beat this team. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I feel like they're going to win. I don't know if it's going to be a blowout. Um, it, can it be by at least five? Yeah, I think it, for it, you know yeah. certain people in the audience, thirty-eight, thirty, or 30, you know, I think that. Be- <laughs> okay, Brent Musburger, just asking. Hey, the people of Detroit want to uh, know, and then who are they going to send the invoice to if it's wrong? <laughs> Thomas John Lang. I just said they're going to win, so take the money line, Mike. Be no, um, no, I, I Seattle looked bad last week. They did. That was a maybe the biggest surprise I saw from week one. I mean, Giants I, I forty think- to nothing. Yeah, but I didn't think, no, well, we all knew Dallas was going to be a good team. Now that game kind of got away from them, but everybody Ugh. thought the Rams were going to be terrible. I, know. I mean, the Rams have nobody, right? right? They're relying on all these no receivers Cooper and Cup. nobody, yeah. you know, in their defense. I mean, they still got Aaron Donald, but you look around, you're like, who who the hell are these players? And they they beat Seattle's ass in Seattle. And uh, Seattle, what, had 12 yards yeah, combined that, in the second half? I that mean, was it, a head scratcher because I really thought the Seattle kind of took them for granted. And I know it's professional and you're not supposed to, but they look like, oh, the Rams are coming in here with half a team. We got this. We don't have to. It reminded me of the time when Kyler Murray and the Cardinals came to Ford Field and then he admitted, yeah, we really didn't game plan. For the <laughs> yeah, Lions. Well, yeah, just weren't ready. You got punched in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, I we mean, really didn't take him seriously. Yeah. This is the game that I did. a bit surprising, though. I mean, I mean, later you found out yeah. that, yeah, it, you, it is who he is. But I look at the Lions and yeah, this is the game that it, it really – solidifies if you're going to be legit or not. Yeah. Can you not listen to everybody saying how great you are because you went into Kansas City and did something where people couldn't do 
and get focused for Seattle, who struggled. You don't want to happen what happened to Seattle last week with thinking, well, the Seahawks are down. Yeah. I heard Mike on the radio. We're going to go out here and win. <laughs> There's nobody in that building that is underestimating Seattle. I thought you were going to say um, heard Mike on the radio. <laughs> no, no, that also, too. Yeah, also, also correct. No, correct. Uh, but the Seattle's not as bad as I, I think they played last week, and I think the guys know that. And I think just hearing players and coaches talk, I mean, look, every team's different year to year, uh, but Seattle has – I mean, they've kind of kicked the Lions' ass the last couple they, years. I know, they they, I know, you. it was close last year at forty-eight, forty-five, but forty-eight points. I mean, that, and the year before, fifty something, and they're rushing for, you know, two hundred yards. Like you can't help but to take that personal. And I think that this this game has kind of turned into a little bit of a mini rivalry, sort of say. Outside, you know, you get that with division opponents. You don't usually get that with other teams, though. Um, those players down there, and even Aaron Glenn mentioned yesterday that. Uh, they're taking it personal. I mean, they've kind of been embarrassed the last couple of years by by what Seattle's been able to do to them. And uh, but they're not underestimating them. I promise you that they're not looking at the tape and saying, "Oh, you know, Seattle stinks. It's going to be a walk in the park. We're back home." Uh, they're going to take them serious. And I think it, that for that reason, I think it, it is going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a lot closer than a lot of people think. No, 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 no. by at least five. <laughs> well, I can't control that. I, you can <laughs> pass it along. You want me to slip 100 into the ref's pocket? I don't care <laughs> by any means necessary. I want the people of Detroit to profit off of their team. All right? This isn't more more smiles per gallon. Okay. I want these people winning money. <laughs> See, don't get greedy now, all right? Let's just take a win. Listen, Let's take you two. Got, no. You got okay. plenty of sway down there at Rotunda Drive. Just tell everybody I need, them, I need their best. Just keep reminding them on the bench. No victory formation. All right, <laughs> fellas, we need to win by five. Keep it moving. You know what? We need to practice the field goal kicker. Let's just go out there and kick this field goal. Right. You okay. didn't kick anything last week. I need to know what you can do. Fourth and inches from the goal line. Oh, let's just cover. Let's get you know what? This Jalen Hurst looks like he knows what he's doing. Let's try this play. <clears throat> yes. Quarterback sneak. Jared, have, get out there. One other question for you, because obviously, I, you know I wasn't high in the Bears. I don't think the Bears are going to get any good. Don't. Fields looks like a disaster. The Vikings, you knew my thought. They were a fraud. Yeah. The, are, are we, Rico and I have the same opinion here. The Packers are going to be the team that's going to challenge the Lions. You I buy think so. that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, you know I've been saying that the last couple of weeks that that don't sleep on the Packers. Don't sleep. They don't need Jordan Love to be great. They don't no. need Jordan Love to be an All Pro player. They've got enough talent, especially on defense, uh, to go out there where if he's just good or okay, TJ. they're still going to compete in every game and they're going to have a chance to win. I, I, Green Bay is going to be a good here. team. Reminds me of a team here. You don't need golf to be great. Just don't turn the ball over Fair. and win by five. Yeah, and Minnesota now 0-2. I mean, they can't get out of their own way. I mean, what, eight turnovers Self, now in two games? I mean, I mean, put it this way. Bears, I mean, If oh. they don't turn the ball over, they really look like a good team. But you just got to sit there and wait. Tick, 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 tick. There you go. There's Dude, last the night, did you see, you know, Christian Darisaw, their left tackle? Mm -hmm. Like, he's working through some kind of injury, but he moves like TJ. Not player TJ, current TJ. <laughs> that poor man, he was like... He's only in like his third year or two. Dude, but, but he couldn't move. Yeah. It was hor. They're horrible. I'm watching the Bears game last weekend, and uh, I think the announcers were like, you know, Justin Fields says he wants to run a lot less and take care of himself and, you know, develop as a passer. And it was music to the coach's ears, you know, because oh, okay. they don't want to see him. And I said, you know what? That's music to every other team you play against ears because Justin Fields just isn't a good quarterback. Like that's the one thing he does good is run. Did you? Did you? And he's see athletic. Some of the, uh, he, he's not going to beat you th throwing the ball 35, 40 times a game. No way. You see some of the breakdowns where he had multiple receivers open on the same play, and he didn't cut it. Loose. Yeah, just wouldn't throw it. It's because he's not seeing it. Yeah. Like he, he's not processing. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, during his developmental stage, he had a coach that hated him. So nobody taught him what to do. That's he, a good point. I mean, it, he's it, on fire today. That's what you're up against. I mean, he, he's <laughs> like a self-made quarterback. Like no one took the time to say, do this, do this, and do this. Who are we talking? Matt Nagy? Was he still there when they took yeah, the year one? Was that Nagy? Yeah. yeah. Then they had to switch regimes and yeah. then they hired Bob Eberflus or whatever his name <laughs> Bob. is. Whatever his name is. Yeah. He's whatever. a dynamic athlete, but when they're like, no, oh, we want him to pass more. It's like, okay, I'm sure every defense you play wants you to pass more too, Justin. If you have questions for TJ, feel free. We are going to get to the phones. Uh, the fight song has to go. We're talking about it. And Rico's made a guarantee. Very excited. We're going to get to that.